Okay, hi there. In this video, we'll look at how you can bring in the concept of consumer surplus when analysing and evaluating the effects of businesses enjoying economies of scale. So what is consumer surplus? Well, it's defined as the difference between the price that consumers are willing and able to pay for a product, which is shown by the demand curve, and the price or the total amount they actually do pay in the market. The total amount, of course, is the price per unit multiplied by quantity. It's a measure of economic welfare. And how do we show the amount of consumer surplus? Well, typically, uh, the area of consumer surplus is a triangle, and it's an area underneath the demand curve, the willingness and ability to pay, and above the actual prevailing market price that's being charged. And we're going to assume in the following analysis that the price charged is the same for all units consumed. Or typically, we might take, for example, the profit maximising price in a market. Now, why use this video? Well, because top answers in A-level and IB economics, the really good answers often make confident, accurate use of economic welfare and economic efficiency concepts. And consumer surplus is a measure of economic welfare. So I strongly advise you as you're preparing for these papers, as you're revising hard to get top grades, to build consumer surplus into your analysis. So let's work through diagrammatically how economies of scale can affect consumer surplus. I'm going to be using cost and revenue curve analysis. Here we have a set of cost curves, MC1 and AC1, with a downward sloping average and marginal revenue curve. And assuming a profit maximising firm initially, a price at uh, price P1, output Q1, where marginal cost meets marginal revenue, and the green area shows the level of profit. Now, with economies of scale, of course, the whole scale of production can increase. That allows a firm to move on to lower cost curves, for example, MC2, AC2. So that's really an increase in the scale of production. And of course, that allows a profit maximising firm to produce a higher output, Q2, and also charge a lower price, P2. Now, if you're getting the analysis here, you should be able to think, OK, well, that's clearly going to increase the profits of the business. Indeed, it does. There's the cost per unit and there's the new level of profit. So the business will benefit from economies of scale by making a higher profit, even though they're charging a lower price. But now think about the economies of scale and the link with consumer surplus. So to show that, and I think in an exam it's best to label rather than shade, but consumer surplus at the original price and output P1, Q1, is shown by the area labelled A, B, P1. That's consumer surplus. But can you see with scale economies, we move to output Q2 and price P2. So consumer surplus at output Q2 is shown by the area A, C, P2. So there's been a gain in consumer surplus of P1, B, C, P2. P1, B, C, P2. So economies of scale can lead to an increase in consumer surplus. And my strong advice is to use these concepts as part of your analysis. Now think about how you might be able to apply this concept in your writing. So for example, economies of scale might lower the price of essential medicines, such as vaccines. It might allow, for example, the government to be able to fund a widespread adoption of vaccines and booster jabs, etc. Economies of scale in food production might make food more affordable for families on average or below average incomes. And another good example, by way of application, is that economies of scale can help to bring down the cost and the price of renewable energy, perhaps accelerating a shift towards clean energy. So although the theory suggests that economies of scale can improve consumer welfare, it's always good to try to apply the concepts when you can. However, economies of scale might over time increase the market power perhaps of the dominant suppliers in the market, and they might then raise their prices in the long run, which could negate the benefits to consumer welfare. So yes, application very useful, but also to be thinking about your evaluation. So there we go. Hopefully uh, you've been able to see how you can bring in the concept of consumer surplus when analysing and evaluating uh, the effects of businesses enjoying 
economies of scale. Thanks for joining in. Take care and see you all sometime soon.